four, three, two, one. Countdown to completion. Good morning. In the ninth wave, it's really important that we understand the false identity deception. Today's blurb is this. The entire matrix of current human society is built on the ignorance of the masses regarding our identity. What's in a name? In the system, everything is in the name, especially how it is written. This is not new info to the majority or to the minority that are aware, but the masses still sleep, unaware of the greatest deception in human history. Do you still identify with your slave name? Today's topic was crystal clear to me from the moment that I awakened the second time, a little bit after 3 a.m. And I spent a good amount of time in the atrium looking at the stars and visualizing the people that are on my prayer list, holding the world in my heart. But mostly what I was doing was contemplating the message for today. Because it was so, I mean, I wish every day was as crystal clear as it is today. I'm going to preface the legal aspect of this with the spiritual aspect. All of us as humans identify with our ego or our limited perception of our identity. We think that what we are is this body with the mind that we're given or the mind that we use and that the circumstances surrounding our life is what we are not realizing the bigger picture. And so we live our virtually our entire lives as victims of our own ignorance. That's the spiritual foundation for the manifestation in our physical world, our societal world, the system, the matrix. That is the foundation for everything that comes to us and manifests in our lives regarding the matrix. The matrix is merely an outpicturing or a manifestation, as I said, of our own ignorance of our own identity. We don't know who the hell we are. And because we don't, we are easily victimized. We become the prey of other ignorant people who don't know who they are either but have learned how to manipulate the system to their own advantage. And this is the world that we live in. This is the world that we inhabit. This is our life until we change it, until we wake up. And the ninth wave is the time for us to wake up. That's why I say four, three, two, one, last off, countdown to completion. The ninth wave is the completion of the evolution of consciousness. What does it matter how you write your name? As I was pondering this question this morning, I was wondering how it is in, when you write your name in Greek or uh, in the slot in the Russian languages, which is another alphabet, or Arabic, or Chinese, or one of the Oriental languages, where you don't use the English characters, and I know it's not really English characters, but the ones that we use in the English language. The English language, I was realizing, has become the international language. It is the language of not only commerce, but of technology. It is the language of the internet. That's why I'm able to do videos that are watched around the world by people whose first language is not English. And I'm grateful for that. Nevertheless, the English language is also the language 
of enslavement. And I was realizing that very clearly. And the method of enslavement under the Uniform Commercial Code, which operates in, in every country, all commerce worldwide, is conducted under the Uniform Commercial Code. It is the code that comes out of, of London, the city of London, and it is the code under which the Bar Association, the British Accredited Registry, operates. The, the attorneys worldwide that operate in the system are members of a Bar Association. They're part of this matrix. They are the dominant force in the matrix. The military force is Washington, D.C., and the religious force is the Vatican. And these three city-states, the Vatican, Washington, D.C., and the city of London, or the Crown, also known as the Crown in London. They are the true axis of evil on our planet. Forget where they point their finger elsewhere. The axis of evil are those three. And all of the world's systems have been created as part of this matrix, this web of deceit, where our identity is stolen at our birth, and we grow up totally unaware that our name is being used against us just simply by putting it in capital letters, all capital letters. That is known in legal parlance as the straw man. All corporations are straw men. The definition of a straw man is a legal fiction. Our egos are fictional when they are not complete, that is, joined in marriage to the higher self, to our greater self, whatever you want to call it, to our divine self. Many terms you can use, but the ego married to the higher self becomes a natural person, which is how we were all born. We were not born as slaves, but we were enslaved by our parents in ignorance as soon as we were born, when they signed the birth certificate. Many people know all about this, so I'm preaching to the choir, to those of you that know, but the masses still don't get it. When you go to court and they ask, say your name is John Doe, the state versus John Doe, will you step forward please? And you step forward and say, okay, that you step forward to the bench and you're asked, are you John Doe? And you say, yes. You've just identified yourself as the slave. Why? Because that's what the court has jurisdiction over. And then they further the deception by asking, do you understand the charges against you? You think they mean, do you comprehend what they're accusing you of? That's what you think in your mind. That's not what's going on from the other side of the, of the bench. That's not what's going on in the minds of the court or the judge that's sitting, presiding over the court. To, the, to that person, or even to a policeman questioning you, in your car when you're stopped for a traffic violation or just simply stopped at any time by and questioned by a policeman they ask do you understand do you understand when you say yes it means to them this is a slave that I have authority over I am their master they have no rights I dictate to them their rights. The judge goes that way, the police go that way. Any person that's exercising authority in the matrix, that's where they're coming from. And everyone, man, woman, and child that's able to child that's able to comprehend, I'm not talking about little toddlers, but child as far as even eight, seven, eight, nine years old need to be un, need to understand the difference between a natural person and a legal fiction.
We need to be taught that from an early age so that we're not victimized and not enslaved by a bureaucracy. Now that's going to happen. That is happening as a matter of fact. But it is a it is still a process that's that's under that's being undergone in our awakening process. It's happening right now to everyone. The other thing that they do, I've watched in court, is do you waive your rights? Actually, you've already waived your rights by admitting or by identifying with your name that you think is you. Your name is not you, especially when it's all in capital letters. But even when it's not in capital letters, you are more than your name. That's identifying still with the ego. The ego separated from the higher self or from the divine. Then you further did it by saying, I understand. I stand under the charges. And the charge is always, are you ignorant? That's the charge. The charge is ignorance. I am stupid. I don't know who I am. And when you say, I understand, you're saying, I don't know who I am. I'm ignorant. And then they get you to say it a third time. So you've given now, you've already given two witnesses against yourself. And you further incriminate yourself when they ask, ask you, do you waive your rights? And most people say yes. And they've just confirmed with a third witness their own ignorance. The information that I've just shared with you is probably some of the most important information that you'll ever hear in your entire life. If you can get this one point that I'm making about your identity, you are on the way to liberating yourself from the enslavement and the bondage of our human culture. This is happening on a mass scale. I don't know how much of it will happen by the end of, of this ninth wave on October 28, 2011. I'd like it all to happen by that time, but I don't believe it's going to happen quite that fast. But I don't know. I don't know how quickly the dominoes are going to fall and which domino is even going to be the first major domino. I know that there's a lot happening, and I'll be talking about some of that in, in future uh in future videos. But for right now, it's really important that you try to share this information, if you already know it, that you try to share it with those that don't get it yet. And that they understand the very pernicious nature and the insidious nature of the matrix in entrapment. It is all human trafficking, all Commerce, which is, commerce is the basis of human trafficking. They traffic in souls. Okay? And they can only do that because we're ignorant, because we don't know. This is the awakening where the truth has to come out. Where we have to start standing in the truth that we are divine beings. Not merely even just human beings, but to be fully human is divine. We have an identity crisis on our hands. And the identity crisis is knowing who we are. I'm telling you, folks, listen to your own heart about this. Go inside. What resonates? You are loved by God, and you are an infinite and eternal soul. You were never born, and you will never die. That's the real you. The you that is born and that can die is the false identity. It is the ego. But the ego can marry the higher self, the greater self. And in that divine wedding, in that holy matrimony, that wholeness that, is, that ensues by connecting the false identity with the eternal identity, liberation and freedom, flow from that. This is the awakening. This is what the ninth wave is all about. This is its foundation. Namaste.